next time because i do have some free stuff but i don't have it where i could just pull it out yeah that's okay hey everyone and welcome to chef aj live i'm your host chef aj and this is where i introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that i think you should know about well, today is our ghoulishly delicious Halloween episode because it's the first Wednesday of the month, which means it's time for Kathy Hester's Vegan Kitchen. And it just so happens that Halloween is her favorite holiday. She got me this little headpiece to wear. She's wearing a similar one. And she's going to be making some amazing vegan, plant-based, oil-free, of course, recipes like a chili queso dip, a ghoulishly delicious green potato soup, and a no ice cream needed pumpkin pie shake or frozen coffee. Please welcome Kathy to the show. How are you? I finally saw you in person. Yay. I know. It's so exciting. And Live Your Best Life Conference, you guys, it, if she has it next year, you have to go. It was awesome. And I even have, so I always have show and tell whenever I do a show in case something, you know, goes awry or takes longer. And I have some of the California balsamics I got there that are kind of fall flavored and some of the spices from local spicery that we'll talk about when we make my spice blend. But first, um, we're going to make this potato soup. So the links to the recipes that you're going to have right now are going to be tweaked ever so slightly. So you can make this on the stove, you can make this in your slow cooker, because I don't want you to have to hang around all day long. We're going to make it in our instant pot. So the, the immediate ingredients are super, super easy. So we're just going to, let me move this back a little bit. This is a this is really five cups of potatoes, but I'm going to tell you it's four cups and you decide if you want to believe me or not. And then we've got three cups of water. That could be broth, but I'm going to be using my bouillon cubes. So I'll show you and let me get a spatula. Ooh, actually, let me get a better spatula, a mummy spatula. We're going to put in about three table or three cloves of garlic. You like garlic a lot, add more. Hate garlic, allergic to garlic, leave it out. These are literally my bouillon cubes frozen. And you can go to healthyslowcooking.com and get a recipe on how to do it in this oven, on the stovetop, in the slow cooker, or on plant-based Instant Pot. And as soon as I get this started, I will tell you a little bit about it because it's, it's awesome. And if you can't, have, this does have nutritional yeast in it. But since you're making it yourself, you can make it without. Okay, so I'm just going to put these on on high pressure for about, I'm saying seven minutes. Why? Because it says seven and now I don't have to do anything else. Somewhere between five and 10 minutes is fine, depending on how big the chunks of potatoes you did. So we just let that sit aside. So the bouillon cubes, and you take an onion, take the peel off, just slice it and kind of put it at the bottom of a Dutch oven, a slow cooker, your Instant Pot. Your Instant Pot, you have to put in like a half a cup of water or it won't come up to pressure. Then we do some just carrot coins. Um, you could put garlic in there if you wanted to. Usually I just do carrots and celery, and I take some time, like T-Y-M, uh, T-H-Y-M-E time, not T, not looking at the clock time. And then you cook it, depending on your method, for various amounts of time. And you can find that all depending on your cooking method on one of my sites. And then once it's done, in the, in the slow cooker, you don't even add any water. The water from the vegetables comes out and reduces and makes this wonderful bouillon. It has no additives, no salt. And like I said, if you are being sensitive to nutritional yeast, you don't have to add it. Usually I add nutritional yeast and blend it. You could add mushrooms, you could do different herbs, you can do celerac or celery root instead of the celery if you wanted to. And it's ridiculously cheap. Chef AJ, is there like a, a bouillon or a broth that you recommend? Well, you know, I usually use the, the it's called Bada Bing Bada Boom from Local Spicery. Oh. And it's a powder that I add and it's very, very flavorful. That's what I oh. usually use. 
okay, that's awesome. Um, and I just, once I make this bullion, I just put it in ice cube trays, as you saw, and put it in the freezer. And then usually I make enough for four to six months. So I make it twice a year. So it's easy peasy. And I thought it would be fun. We'll go ahead and do this before we get to the, I'm trying to decide the blender will do last. Um, I made this really interesting spice, I think. Let's see why this one. I feel like one of my cameras is being weird, naughty, naughty, naughty camera. There we go. So you can kind of see it there. See how dark it is. And I thought that would be really fun to have. And I had Cheryl taste it and I didn't tell her anything I put in it. She's like, it tastes kind of like seasoning salt and it would be a great Halloween salt substitute or just sprinkle for things. And we'll sprinkle it on our green soup. You could sprinkle it on the orange queso too. Though there is one ingredient that's a little different that you may not have and you could totally leave this out. Have you ever seen anything so dark? It, it looks like the beginning of a horror movie. It's it's food grade charcoal. So I want to mention a caveat to this. If you're on certain kinds of medication, this can make it not absorb. Okay. So maybe if you're just making it for the kids and nobody's on medications, you're good to go, but just be aware of that. So if you're on some medication, you need to make sure it's being absorbed into your body, leave the charcoal out, but it is kind of what makes it spooky. I do you think you might be able to, I haven't really found like black carrot powder, but if you could find that, that would work really well too. So I'm just gonna put everything in the spice uh, grinder. And so we're gonna put in a tablespoon of this charcoal. And I've made gnocchi, little potato dumplings is unhealthy slow cooking. I made them black cats with this charcoal, which is why I have it. We're gonna do a tablespoon of smoked paprika. And if you hate smoky flavors, you can use regular paprika for sure. And this is a really easy one to remember because pretty much everything is one tablespoon except for one ingredient. I'm gonna put some tomato powder. And so the smoked paprika adds some umami, darker flavor, kind of like this base of depth because the richer and more layered, the more layered this is, the more we'll kind of taste it all the way around. So the tomato powder, gives it a little bit of interesting flavor. And I just bought a big thing of tomato powder because I ran out on Amazon and it's probably gonna last me for a long time, but it wasn't very expensive. We're gonna do a tablespoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon of onion powder. And it could be granulated or powder. And again, if let's say you're allergic to onions or you're allergic to garlic, just go ahead and leave it out. And also, if you have questions, if you have allergies and you're like, what can I use instead of whatever? I need a tablespoon that fits into my jars. That's what I would like to ask the universe for. And then this is super cool. And I just actually made this on the class for Fabulous at 40. And it's just chili powder. So you take ancho, dried ancho chilies or dry guajillo chilies, and you can get them at Walmart. Get the stems out, cut it with um, kitchen shears, get out the seeds and ribs. I then cut it as well into strips and dehydrate it. Put it in the spice grinder. It's the best and the cheapest chili powder you will ever have. And it's amazing for holiday gifts because it takes so little effort so little expense. If you can find a Hispanic store near you, it's incredibly inexpensive to make this. If you didn't have this, you could use what I call chili for the stew powder because it has cumin, it has garlic, it has all those other things in it. Or if you had hatch chili powder, New Mexican chili powder, that's fine too. And then we're going to put in a teaspoon 
of ground celery seed, and that's gonna make it taste a little salty for us. So it's a salt-free blend, but I think it works really well as kind of like the salt substitute. Kathy, do you think there's a difference between tomato powder and sun-dried tomato powder? Oh, I think in the end, the flavor should be pretty similar if it's truly sun-dried and not just like I threw them in the dehydrator, that's how I make mine. Um, it could have a deeper, richer flavor over the time of the dehydration, but I think in general, it's pretty darn close. And if you have some sun-dried tomatoes that are not packed in oil and not moist, but you know, really brittle, you can pop those in your spice grinder or coffee grinder you got at the thrift store and ran some white rice through to get the coffee flavor out. So all that works. And I'm just gonna blend this for a second. And you could not blend it, but it's going to, but since I'm going for this kind of color, if I don't blend this, there's gonna be some parts darker than others. And I think this will make a better blend. And that's about all I have to blend it for. I'm gonna, I encourage you to let, let that stuff sit longer than I do, because what happens is a black cloud comes up and it looks very spooky. We can see if it'll do it. Oh, there you go. I don't know if you saw it, but there was a, a little one. And if we come here, you can't see anything because it's so dark, but there are actually some little white pieces and things like that. So then we can just take a little taste, mix it up a little. Maybe you can see a little bit, nah. See if you can see a little bit of the variation this way, if there's enough light. Yeah, see how there's, everything isn't completely dark. There's some little specks of onion powder and things. But when you taste it, it's not spicy. So ancho chili and guajillo chili, the reason I mentioned those two in specific is they're very mild. Mm. And I just breathe, breathe some in as I always do. What's that cool little diffuser or the green thing you have? It is purely a Halloween decoration, but look, it's on batteries. And it's got, it, when I turn it on, it does the whole little thing. It makes me so happy. <laughs> I'm ridiculous and I know it. Why you love <laughs> Harry Potter so much. I do. I just, I think having something magical where you can kind of step outside yourself for a few minutes is just really helpful to me. I tend to be a little bit type A and do too much work and not enough play. So I think that's why I go hard on Halloween. But you, this, oh, go ahead. Do you give out treats where you live? Do you get trick-or-treaters? We do not get trick-or-treaters, but during the pandemic, we, so when we moved here, we were the youngest people in the neighborhood. So there were a lot of people aging out of the neighborhood. And so that meant lots of new people were coming in and they brought kids. So they were younger. And over the pandemic, we made up these little packets because I used to do a Gothic dinner party every year, like a multi-course sit down vegan extravaganza. Um, and I would do tablescapes. So I get kids toys and put in the tablescapes and we'd put them away. So we made these big bags of like, I don't know, zombie witch fingers and all these different toys. And, um, we dropped them off at the kids near us. So that was really fun, but no, we just don't get trick or treaters. Our first year, Cheryl used it as, uh, we have like this. 15 foot blow up castle front that Cheryl <laughs> that we haven't used since then and we we left out some candy for people to get and no one came so maybe it'll change how about you do you get trick-or-treaters where you are actually it's funny because we're the oldest people in our community now <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what to give out that's you know somewhat healthy but that they'll eat that's really funny and I I know you mentioned this too at Live Your Best Life and um, or it was a question to Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle 
And Dr. Lyle was like, yes, I give out candy. And I think it has to do if you want to keep it in your house. But I think there's some in-betweens now that you didn't used to have. Like it used to be pretty much you give out apples, toothbrushes, right? <laughs> Raisins. Those used to be like the only healthy options. And now that you can go to Target and, and dollar stores, they had like zombie parachute men and little games you can play and stuff like that. So that's what we usually do. I would probably think about doing a homemade treat if I knew everybody, but it was creepy when I was little. And I think it's still creepy if you don't know someone and they give you a brownie you know, your mom's not going to let you eat that. I don't know. My mom wouldn't let me eat it. My mom was like cutting up the apples from the, the person who was trying to be the nice apple person. How about you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a complicated holiday, but you know, it's interesting that um, how the different doctors handle it differently. What, what did you think of Dr. Scharfenberg? He was the older yeah, doctor. He's 100. Isn't he something? He was delightful. Oh my goodness. He was so, he was so full of life. I literally have never seen someone in their eighties or nineties as full of life as he is. Like he had this sparkle in his eye all the time. Well, he's you know? a, little, a little adorable laugh. I wonder if he's going to give give out things for trick or treaters. You oh, know, yeah. people are saying thing in the chat like glow sticks, and you know, I mean, they, I, I hear Costco sells like mini play doh. What do you think of things like that? Oh, I think they're great because here's the thing. I think how healthy things got a bad name at Halloween was when I was when you got you you got what you wanted, which was candy, or you got like a toothbrush. Or I'm from the South, or you got a little booklet of something that was not geared towards children. So there were little things that weren't helpful or fun. I think if you give a kid something fun, how could they not like it, right? Like Play-Doh, that's something you get to use for a long time. Or I don't know if Silly Putty exists anymore. Most people don't have newspapers, but like I could spend hours with Silly Putty when I was a kid getting that little cartoon up. Like we were so easily amused as children compared to children today. <laughs> but glow sticks, you know, they have like little glow necklaces. They have little rings for, you know, people that you could even have a bowl of like maybe two to four different kinds of toys and let them pick the toy. There were like, look, I know there's some sparkly yo-yos. And the, I mean, these aren't the yo-yos you go to yo-yo competition with. They're cheap and they're not going to last forever. But I think for that month, it'd be really special. How about Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> they probably know what to do with it, whereas I do not. Hey, Kathy, right? you know so much about equipment and what is, do you know what this is and what it's to? I, I don't want to throw it out if it's to one of my kitchen things, but does anybody know what this is? Huh. Could that have to, could that go in your champion juicer for something? I don't think so. It says, oh my, it says M-O-E-N on it. I wonder if it's a plumbing thing, but I, I don't oh, know. Oh, Moen, that would be a plumbing thing. Because I was just wondering, because like the champion juicer is so long. That maybe it was a cleaning thing. I don't know. Isn't that weird? That Just is weird. Find random oh. things. You and me both. You and me both. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to go ahead and start the chili um, pumpkin queso. And the recipe you guys are getting uses a little bit of organic cornstarch. When I taught the class at Fabulous at 40s, I made it without and it worked just fine. So we're gonna make it without today and I didn't really do anything that much different. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in about a cup and a half of water. And I love this because it doesn't have to be a queso that you're going to like slather, store-bought, oil-laden salt chips. So we're not talking about using it for that. So I think sometimes our brain goes, queso, I can't have queso. You can make this without salt, 
We're making this without nuts. We're making it now even without the cornstarch. Probably the, the only ingredient some people may not like, or well, there's two. One is nutritional yeast. Leave it out. If you can't have it, just leave it out and everything will be fine. Will it taste exactly the same? No, but it'll be a delicious sauce to go over your baked potatoes with your um, air fried thing, credible tortillas that Chef AJ turned me on to. Or another thing I like to do too is, is just in my Instant Pot, cook the little baby potatoes. And then I smash them between wax paper and I air fry them. Those make delightful chips too. And if you find maybe you eat too many corn tortillas, like sometimes I do, which is why we have a, we have a number limit of the amount of tortillas that go in. <laughs> With the potatoes, it just feels good to me. We're going to do about three quarters of a cup of rolled oats. And the oats are what's going to make it get thick and everything too. And I'll show you from overhead because I made. So we've got the nutritional yeast and that's a quarter cup. This is a teaspoon of granulated garlic, could be garlic powder. And if you see dirt on my hands, it's not dirt, it's charcoal, I promise. Um, that's onion powder. This is lactic acid. Chef AJ, I don't know if yes, you guys are you lactic sent me, I did. I forgot <laughs> to tell you, you sent me lactic acid. I'm so excited. Thank you. Oh, I think you're going to love it. And the thing is, is it's just, especially if you're having some trouble with nutritional yeast, this also adds a little bit of sourness that makes it seem like it's been fermented. Um, this is just like literally a pinch of dry mustard powder. You don't have to use that. Um, I can't believe I just forgot what this is. Jalapeno powder, because it's not green. I was like, I didn't put cumin on there, did I? No. So if you, this makes it a tiny bit spicy, it gives it a little bit of green undertones, which I think balances it all out. This is ancho guajillo chili blend that you saw me do before. You could also just take a whole ancho chili, take the stem and seeds out, just like we talked about and cut it up, put it in a little dish, just like a little dish like this, right? And pour warm water, let it sit for about 10 minutes, throw it into the blender and then it'll all blend up. And so you'll get the same thing in case you don't happen to have, um, have it at hand. So I'm just gonna put all this stuff in here. So I really think of this as being a magical <laughs> sort of thing, because you're like, all of those things are not gonna turn into a queso. Those of you that have seen it happen, you know it will happen, but, it just seems crazy to me. And the first time I tried it, because I tend to go, I bet I can't do X. Or Chef AJ, you've said that to me before. And you know how I get, and then I'm like, watch me, right? You're like, you can't, <laughs> you can't make whatever out of whatever. Oh yes, I can. Let's find out. That's funny. Now, this is going to have to blend for a while. So if you want to talk to the people a little bit and turn me off, what's going to happen is this is going to blend from like one to three minutes. You do want to do this on a blender like a Vitamix blend tech or a heated blender because the heat helps the oats thicken up. If you don't have one, all is not lost. Blend it up, heat it over the stove with a whisk the whole time. And then if it gets a little lumpy, as it usually does, blend it a second time. Okay. So while she's blending, has anyone here ever tried lactic acid in their recipes? I'd love to hear from you in the chat what the outcome was. She just sent me a bag for Halloween. I'm excited to try it. And tomorrow at 11 a.m. is Jeremy Lalonde. He is a Canadian filmmaker. He has a YouTube channel now that lost half his body weight eating as much as he wants so we'll be having that conversation as well and what do you guys do for halloween do you have children do you trick or treat what do you give out i'm struggling because i obviously it's going to have to be vegan but then you know i don't want candy in the house and i don't really want to be giving sugar to kids so i could always just go to the movies which actually I have my improv class that night. So I will be out, but they usually come early because they're, they're little ones in this neighborhood. So 
got to give them something, right? I, I would rather have money. Can you give a little kid like five bucks? <laughs> I don't know. Gosh, when we, uh, stickers, that's a great idea. When we were little, we, we knew where Bob Hope lived in Toluca Lake and he didn't actually answer his door because there was like a guard gate but uh, we they'd give out like and this was 1971 so they'd give out full size candy bars instead of the miniatures so that was pretty cool and we just keep coming back you know change our mask that kind of thing yep oh you missed the Scott family you know I've been in contact with them Terry and they're just so busy because their oldest destiny she's like pretty much like a pro basketball player and they're always driving here and there taking her to tournaments so they're just super busy mini all fruit bars actually that's a great suggestion karen and that's something that i think what, what are they called that's it and they sell those at costco so maybe i'll do something like that i just don't want them to like be so disappointed that it's something healthy i don't know about giving fresh fruit parents might think that's kind of weird so you're thinking uh, fresh fruit would be weird? Well, well, yeah, somebody said nectarines, but I, I I think if you gave a kid a piece of fresh fruit, that would be like putting coal in their Christmas stocking, you know? Well, see, I probably would have been the kid that would, and I I love sugar, loved sugar, so don't get me wrong before it makes it, me sound like I was pristine, but like stone fruit or like crazy, the favorite. But if you give either it's not going to be ripe and they can't eat it or it's going to be ripe and then it's going to smush into all their other candy. That's what I would say about nectarines. But so this actually is taking less time than I thought it was going to, which is kind of awesome. And let me show you from over here. Well, actually, you can even see here to start to see it's kind of thick. See how it's staying on there? which is awesome. And then when we look at it from above, see, see how thick it is? And I'll get a spoon and that's from doing nothing, right? I just hung out while I did this itself. So to me, that's a pretty thick queso-like substance. See that? And we'll just pour some of it into our little thing. I've got some little red salsa here and we could do things like, um, oh, I don't know. You could do the potatoes. You could do some corn chips. You could do some um, just little bite-sized potatoes and let everybody dip it in. But see how this is not a sad queso substitute. In fact, it's, and it's delicious. I'm getting cheese everywhere. Mm. It's really, really quite good. So it has a lot of flavor from the ancho chili and the chilies that we had, but it also has some nice flavor from the jalapeno powder. If you don't have jalapeno powder, you could just put in some pickled jalapeno slices. You could put in part of a fresh jalapeno. And if you can't get ancho chilies, you could just leave that out. But I do you see how little effort it was to do this and bring it kind of in. So it's kind of amazing to me. And then we'll finish up our soup real quick. And what I really wanted to show you today, too, is just how easy it is to make all this. So we're making an appetizer that could be... You know, it would be awesome for kids steamed broccoli and cauliflower to dip in that sauce. Because I'm like, how can we get some veggies in? Maybe our kids are going trick-or-treating. My kids have four legs, so they are not going trick-or-treating. <laughs> but if yours is, um, I'm just going to let the pressure come out of this. If yours are going trick-or-treating, it's kind of like when Dr. McDougall talks about preloading, right? Having a little bit of salad or something before your meal, or how Chef AJ talks about eating veggies first, right? Why don't yep. we feed them some really healthy queso, some potato soup with greens, and even a pumpkin shake that's gonna have, that can still give them a lot of those sweet flavors. And I'm gonna use dates to make ours today, but you could use any sweetener that you wanted to use. I should have had this going when uh, I was doing the uh, blender. 
live and learn, right? <laughs> Everybody thinks if you make food on the internet, you've got it all together all the time. I can assure you I do not. And I like my potato soup with a little bit of texture. So I'm going to blend up the creamy element with the green element, which is gonna be just some kale. You could use collard greens. You could really use any greens at all. We're gonna put about a quarter cup of oats. And basically we're making green milk for all intents and purposes. And you could use cashews if that's okay with you, but it's, you know, oats work great. And I feel like oats are something that everybody seems to be able to eat mostly. There's always exceptions to everything. My Harry Potter spatula. We'll get some of this down in here. And I'm gonna take some of the broth, about a quarter cup. I'm just not, seems like from doing that, the garlic went everywhere. So I'm gonna use a ladle and then we'll just use some of the potato water. And you could add salt or not, that's up to you, but we're gonna use kind of our salt substitute. And really all you're looking for is enough to, to blend this. So about a half a cup. If you love liquid smoke like I do or smoky foods, this is a really pure liquid smoke. Some do add caramel coloring and things, but this one does not. So I'm just going to add a few drops. You could, um, there's only a few drops in here. You could use smoked paprika if you wanted to as well. It doesn't matter. And if you're like, I hate smoke and smoky foods, don't use it at all. This is your potato soup. I'm just asking you to make it green for Halloween. <laughs> so I'm not asking you to do anything super crazy. So you could use an immersion blender and put all this together. This kale is not cooked and neither would collard greens. Just from being warm in the soup, it will cook enough and stay bright green. Okay, that out of the way. And then I'm just gonna mash up. So you could either like, see how it mashes even just with the spatula. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get my potato masher out if it's here. My little one is here, my big one is not. And so, I like the way that leaves just a little bit of texture of the potato. If you like yours to be a complete puree, then use an immersion blender at this point. We often put things like shiitake bacon crumbles or um, you know something like that, something smoky on top. I have an oil-free cheese shreds that sometimes Cheryl likes to put on that you have to make from scratch, but they're pretty easy. Or if you can have nutritional yeast, you can just add a little more nutritional yeast to it and give it a cheesy flavor. And if you can't, that's okay. But see, I like mine real thick like this. We may end up adding some more water or broth if you're using broth. But look how pretty. And that, you know, it's such a nice green color that I think it's just so lovely. And if you like your potato soup thick, like there was a potato soup that Cheryl loved that we used to get at this one restaurant that was full of butter and cream and made her stomach hurt every time she ate it. And so I was like, 
why don't I make a potato soup for you? And I just love too that you have this spooky green soup that tastes just, it really does. You can make it some darker green by adding more greens. But this is fine for me right now. And if you have kids, I mean, this is another thing. It's just because you're encouraging them not to eat a bunch of sugar doesn't mean that the food that they're eating can't be fun. And I guess that's what I really want you to kind of see. And if you're like, I hate this lady's lumpy potatoes soup. Well, what's interesting is, does it taste different psychologically? Because you see it green, you know, it's, it's. Right. Um, it doesn't to me. So then I would, let me just kind of clean it off, which I'm doing for the power of the intranets. Cheryl's, I'll give this one to Cheryl. And in the recipe itself too, I have where you could cut out little bats out of pumpernickel bread toast and put on there. You could air fry some potato, sweet potato chips and put in there and it looks like flame, but we're just putting some magic black sprinkle on it. There's no salt in here, so you can use as much as you want. You could also use a stencil if you wanted to make like a bat or something. But I just thought, I had not thought about doing a black spice blend until I knew I was doing the show with you. And I just think it's so fun. And I'll take a taste. And so like, see mine's thick and yours doesn't have to be if you want it thinner. Mm. This is our favorite soup. And we eat it all year round. It's just a nice way to get a little bit of green into someone who maybe doesn't want to eat a little bit of green. And it has a, a light smokiness from the liquid smoke or smoked paprika. And there's smoked paprika in the sprinkle as well. Anybody have any questions about that? Uh, Jane's saying, how do you make shiitake bacon? Well, actually, I had brought over, because I got a couple of things from local spicery. I always have show and tell stuff just in case. Let me taste this. Yeah. You can get some local spicery bacon seasoning, thinly slice, then air fry or bake the mushrooms, turn them over. But I would sprinkle them with this while they're still kind of wet and let dry on. You can do that. You can also marinate carrots and other things sliced thin thinly with a little bit of soy sauce co or coconut aminos, a little bit of liquid smoke. You can leave the liquid aminos and soy sauce out if you wanted no sh salt. But I would also put some smoked paprika in there, maybe a little bit. If you're doing bacon, like a nice coarse ground black pepper is also good and you could sprinkle it with a little date sugar if you wanted to and then bake it. And then as that top half gets kind of gelled up or baked off to where you can flip it over without it all coming off and you can put it on the other side too, if you wanted. That's what I would do. <laughs> That's how I would make it up. <laughs> and then we just have one more. We have our dessert. <gasps> you guys. I forgot to put the pumpkin in my pumpkin queso. How did no one tell me that? Because I'm like, where is my open can of pumpkin? Here it is. I'll blend it back in, but it was supposed to have pumpkin in there. Uh-oh. This is so funny. This, this happens all the time. I, I, to me, too. Like, you forget something in a recipe, you put it in the oven, and you're like, uh-oh. Right? And the thing is, is I think everyone thinks it only happens to them. And trust me, it is not only happening to you. It's happening to all of us all the time. Now, the one ingredient I use in these ice creamless shakes is chia seeds. And I couldn't find my grams, so I figured we'd just grind some up together in case you guys haven't used them. 
Chef AJ, do you buy your chia seeds already ground or do you grind them? I, I buy them. You know, it's interesting. I buy the white ones because I find that like when I'm doing them in dessert recipes, like a banana chia pudding, they're prettier. So the white ones, I oh. only see them come whole. I've never seen them come ground. I don't like it either, actually. And I think, I think it's maybe considered white ones. Aren't the white ones, they're not all white. They're just not all well, black. They're, they're just less dark, but, but you know, they're, I just, they're, I think they're maybe a little bit more expensive. I'm not sure, but that's the ones I always buy. I get them at Whole Foods. Oh, smart. And I know I had it in my hand. I'm feeling like a very much an old person today. Do you ever feel a little bit like, wait, I'm not supposed to be forgetting things yet. And I don't know if it's because I'm old or because I'm doing too many of the things. <laughs> You're multitasking. Yeah. And this brain is only made for so many of those. So I'm just putting it in my spice grinder and we're going to grind it up. And this is a natural way to get that kind of gelling power that people get, and by people, I mean Starbucks, gets in their Frappuccino. They use Sanctum gum. So you could use Sanctum gum instead if you wanted to. So to make this, I'm going to be using some water. But if you wanted to make this into a frozen coffee instead of a frozen shake, all you have to do is change out some of the water for coffee, pre-brewed or cold brew coffee. I cold brew to Chino, even though they say don't cold brew it, it works really well for me. I've had some good luck with it. So we're gonna do about. Have you ever tried the same me? I, that tastes exactly like coffee to me. I have not, but I'm dying to try it since you've told me about it. Yeah, and it almost tastes like chocolate or mocha, but that's the one I like. I mean, I'm not a coffee drinker, but when I made it to taste, I'm like, this tastes just like coffee. Ooh. And it's completely gluten-free, which is what I like about it. Yeah, and all Ticino is not, but Ticino does have some. So I'm going to put some dates in here, and I've just soaked a couple of medjool dates. You just add it to your taste. Honestly, I add less. I think I'm probably putting about three dates in here. For this, if it had coffee in it, I am likely to add more. We are going to put in about a quarter cup of pumpkin. So there's actual real vegetable in this, which is exciting. <laughs> Maybe only to me. And it's my favorite vegetable. Um, we're going to go ahead and put about a teaspoon of the ground chia seed in. I may even do just a little bit more. And what, why you need to use this or xanthan gum or something to hold it together. So a lot of times with shakes, you're using ice cream, which already has some stabilizers or natural stabilizers in it. When you blend up ice and a liquid drink, it sort of, it makes the ice smaller, but it still separates. This helps keep it pulled together. And that's why if you've ever tried to make like a frappuccino at home without using xanthan gum or chia seeds, it doesn't work. Okay, so I need about a half cup of oats. And again, if you, I'm making this an oat shake. I think the actual original one uses pecans to make pecan milk. And I just wanted to take that allergen out so that more people could do it. And also if you have kids with allergies already, you know, Halloween can be a little hard anyhow. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some spices, especially if I can find, well, here we go. I'm going to do about, and you can change all of these to suit your needs. We're going to put about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And you're going to sit, you're going to be like, that was not a half a teaspoon. And it was not. I'm feeling very cinnamony today. So you too can feel very cardamomy or whatever you want. I'm going to do um, about a quarter teaspoon of cardamom. 
I'm going to do about a quarter teaspoon of allspice, even though the recipe says a little different because I'm feeling it today. And we'll put a little bit of nutmeg in there and about a pinch of cloves. But if you're not sure and you're using some of these spices yourself, maybe you've been like, I've always gotten pumpkin spice out. And you're not sure if this is your blend, smell it. I'll let you see here too. So I find if you smell things, it can be incredibly helpful to just see what's going on and to kind of smell what's going on really. Cause like the cloves are just right. These cloves are fresh. I would not want more of them. Let's say I inadvertently put too many cloves in. Well, I would build up the cinnamon, maybe add a little more cinnamon, add a little more nutmeg, something like that. And then I think I already put in the chia seeds. And then we're going to mix this up. And then we're going to add our ice. So basically right now we're turning this into pumpkin spice milk. So if you don't, if it's cold where you are and you don't want a, an ice drink, you could stop here and not use the chia seeds. And whenever you're working with oats in a cold drink, you don't want to let them get warm. That's when they start to get slimy. So if you wanted to make oat milk, everybody's like, how do I not make oatmeal slimy? Use cold water, maybe even put a little ice in there. And it's okay if you're making oat milk and you still have a few pieces of oats like this, it's okay, you're gonna strain it. We're not straining today because um, you don't notice it the same way in a milkshake and we're gonna blend it more with some ice. But what I'm gonna do is take a taste of this. Mm, that's really good. So I'm tasting if it's sweet enough. And I think it could use another date. And actually, I'm going to get that date in there. You ever taste <laughs> it? You ever taste it and go, oh my God, this is terrible. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, usually I try to, you get a hint when you smell it. So if you smell it and everyone says, oh, Kathy, I want your nose. And I'm like, whenever I've had in-person stuff, I pass around two things. The first ones I pass around go together. The next ones don't. And there's never been a person who hasn't gone, oh, I wouldn't want to put those two things together, right? You know, because everybody's nose it's pretty instinctual that this is a good thing and this is not a good thing. And I'm just letting the dates kind of this. Okay, and I'm gonna go get some of my fancy pants, like good ice <laughs> that I have over here. But if you can put crushed ice in here, it's just easier on the blender. And it'll be about a cup. We actually have a fancy ice machine over here. And, and I usually, I'm gonna air in the side of probably two cups, I think. And I'll show you how I look at it and kind of decide. So I kind of shake it and see how you can still see some of the ice. That's usually enough. And sometimes it's even too much, but I like everything thick. I want it to be like a double thick milkshake without double thick ice cream in there. I think it needs more ice. I'll show you. See, to me, it's too loosey goosey. So I'm going to add a bunch more ice in there. I would not make these way ahead of time because the ice melts and then it's not as good. 
You remember, Chef AJ, I think you told me you tried to make the strawberry shake into a Ninja Creamy pint. And it's because it's, it's just too watered down. Yeah, you don't want to add the ice if you're going to do that. And probably before ice, you could have made a Ninja Creamy pint out of this too. It's just an oat pint. And you may have to blend longer for your ice because this is like that good ice, <laughs> they call it. Um, Let's see, this is a nice shake and we could make it even thicker, but I'm not going to bore you with me doing back and forth, but still look. And see how it's all kind of staying the same. You see the little eyeballs in there. Oh look, this God, is my that... new Halloween glass. That's Here, something. You really are. A, you should have a Halloween store in your house. I should. Well, I pretty could. So look, I, I thought this would show up more than it does. So I'm a little disappointed in it. But every year we get new Halloween stuff. Not, not We don't throw out the old, but we add something new. Mm. And to me, this is better than Starbucks could ever do. A pumpkin spice syrup and sauce in the U.S. is not vegan. So there's that. Two, you can't get date sweetened anything out and about usually, <laughs> much less something with real pumpkin in it and spiced exactly the way you want it. So, I mean, what, it's been, it's been just about an hour and we made pumpkinless ancho pumpkin <laughs> cheese sauce. So all we have to do is go back in and add the pumpkin in here we made this awesome green potato soup, a dessert, and we even made stuff to sprinkle on things. So we could sprinkle this, um, we could sprinkle our Halloween dust too on our queso. It wouldn't be so tasty on our shake. We could make a whole cinnamon spice one like that, but we didn't. So see how dirty it makes my hands look? So. So that's it. We made four whole things in less than an hour. And I even lost where my water was, right? So what I want you to see in this is a couple of things. One, if you're dreading your kids or grandkids wanting to come over and do something Halloween, this is something fun. And none of these are things that they can't participate in. Even if they're very young, and they can't cut anything up, they can put stuff into the Instant Pot to cook or learn how to use the blender with you there. It gives them a really good start before trick-or-treating. It gives you a chance to eat some real food before you take them trick-or-treating. And it doesn't take that much time. Also, I feel like sometimes people think about Halloween as just being like a bad time for food. And that you can't really have fun unless you're like eating all the things everybody else is eating. You could have this at your house. This is way more fun than eating candy for me. And, you know, there are ways that you can still enjoy this holiday, just like Thanksgiving and Christmas. And Chef AJ will be talking about that, I'm sure, all along as we're all kind of all of us who are trying to eat healthier and take better care of ourselves are kind of, you know, looking to each other for support. And it's really easy to just kind of put a lot, you know, put some poultry seasoning in something and Thanksgiving magically happens, you know, a little peppermint flavoring somewhere. It's just, it's not as hard. You just can't go out and get it. Usually I can, I don't even think you can get like date sweetened coffees where you are, or date sweetened pumpkin spice drinks. Would that be true? I haven't seen, I mean, unless it's some kind of specialty restaurant. No, I mean, not like at Starbucks or any place like, well, I mean, Jamba Juice, it wouldn't be date sweetened, but there's probably things a person could get there. That's a great thing though, like Jamba Juice. And I think, is it clean juice? 
there, I think it's a national chain too. And I think you're right. And I think you can pick to have some things date sweetened. So if you're out and about, that would be an option. It's always, it always tastes better when you make stuff at home too. Don't you, do you find that chef AJ? For the most part, for the most part I do. And it's cheaper. Way cheaper. Have you noticed how much food is going up? Like supposedly the recession is over, but I don't see anything getting cheaper in the store. And I actually just threw away half of a like 10 pound bag, 10 or 15 pound bag of potatoes because they went bad in less than a week. So I don't know what's up with, we're getting really bad potatoes here. This is not the first time in the past month, something like that's happened. I'm supposed to ask you, are you going to Jenna and Friends Animal Sanctuary? Oh, I want to. <laughs> she needs to email me so we have the address. Did you guys meet at the conference? That's incredible that all you guys came all the way from North Carolina. Anna is going to be on the show next Wednesday. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm at a conference, so I might have to watch the replay. But no, because like, it's my dream to be pig snuggling. What conference are you going to? I am going to the Ecamm Creator Camp. So um, Ecamm is the software I use for like my multi-camera setup and streaming. And I use it even when I'm on here with you on Zoom. And this is the first conference they've done and they've made it, it's super cute. They've made it, so everybody's in cabins, they split up couples, but not living in the cabins. These are your learning cabins, right? So we're all staying at hotels, living, living like grownups, but then we'll go to all the different things. And then at the end, there's a talent show where we all, each cabin puts on a little that, show. That sounds like so much fun. Where is this taking place? It's in Amherst, um, Massachusetts. So I was just telling Charles earlier that we're going to be driving up the East Coast, seeing all the beautiful fall fo foliage. I can't say it. Can you say it for me? Fo foliage. Thank you. A professional. <laughs> and we've kind of made it, even though you're really not supposed to go to Salem in October, the same reason you don't want your first visit to New Orleans to be during Mardi Gras, right? It's too crowded and all that. Since we're going to be there, we figured out a way that maybe we can take the train and be there for, if it's too crowded, we'll leave after a small, but I just want to walk around and see a few of the places. Like this has been, you know, it's been a bucket list item for us for a decade to go to Salem. So I'm super excited. We're also with us driving. We like have some italki things that we're going to like steam rice and make our food. I'm making a whole bunch of food for us to take. And we're trying out a bunch of different little tchotchkes for cooking. We've got um, one of these things where we could bake potatoes or heat up, heat up um, things in like Pyrex dishes while we're driving. Is it called a hot logics? Yes, that's it. Evidently, I need a break for the rest of the afternoon because my brain is just like not cooperating anymore. I've been doing a live, one or two lives. You know, you're like a machine. I can't believe it. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm making four recipes on Chef AJ. I can have the day off. Hmm. So a couple of questions I just noticed in the chat. One was about the shake and it was about if you could use banana instead of ice. Yeah, absolutely. I usually what I get whenever I make any kind of like desserty thing like this, or even in the Ninja Creamy ebook, people always want to know how they can make the banana recipes without banana. So I kind of start there. Um, you might be able to do it even with less water and frozen bananas. You might need a little bit of water, but just see how it goes. That, that would also make a delicious Ninja Creamy pint. And before the month's over, I'm going to be doing like pumpkin spice, different things. I found some pumpkin spice applesauce, which I had never seen before at Sprouts. I have and seen that. I've seen that. Yep. So I'm mm. going to see if it'll creamy, right? <laughs> which I think it will. And then I'm also going to make kind of like a pumpkin spice, probably oat ice cream. 
as well, because one of the things I've been doing, and someone's asked me about this too, is I we've been eating oats every morning since we started the McDougal program in July. So, and Cheryl makes them now. I feel like I'm a lady of leisure with Cheryl making my breakfast every day. That's funny. I know, like it doesn't take much, people. If there are any husbands out there watching, it doesn't take much. Just one cup of oats, four cups of water in your slow cooker, and your your wife will go crazy for how awesome you are. Um, um, but every once in a while, we don't eat it all. And it is really weird. It seems like it'll be a few days, and then we don't eat it, and then I just we put it in the fridge. And I've been filling up a Ninja Creamy pint halfway with this cooked steel cut out mixture using some vanilla. You could use vanilla powder. Um, I was using some maple syrup, but you could use date syrup or date puree, or you could fill the rest of the pint up with applesauce and let that be your sweet. I think that would work too. Um, as long as you have some vanilla, the trick is if you spin it too long, this is why it's not a recipe on my site. If you spin it too long, it gets really stringy, but will turn into a delicious milkshake. So that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, you take it out of your freezer, you let it sit maybe 15, 20 minutes so that you would only have to spin it once. So if you usually have to spin things two or three times, you might have to let it sit for 20, 25, 30 minutes. Put it and spin it on light ice cream. It's so thick. It reminds Cheryl of Briar ice cream. And that's what we're doing with our leftover oatmeal. And I, I feel like it's, it's kind of magic. And basically we're eating oatmeal for dessert. So that's very cool. Yeah. But I, I would love it if you guys make it, if you would let me know and tell me how long it had to sit out for you, then I'll put it up as a recipe. I'm just really scared everybody's going to yell at me because they're going to let it get too soft or their freezer doesn't freeze very hard. And I think it's one of those things that's a little bit too touchy. So, yeah. So how long is your conference on Wednesday? It's three days. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I think. And Cheryl's going? Yeah. How fun is that? Well, Cheryl does most of the tech on the back end. It's really funny because I guess it's been about a, a little over a month now that Cheryl's on the lives and everybody loves Cheryl. Cheryl's actually downstairs learning how to use the steam cleaner that we're going to do um, on the YouTube channel or she come up and say hi. But she's the one I'll say, oh, I want a camera that does X, Y, and Z, and she researches it. So she puts all this stuff together and picked out the microphone. Um, so she's nervous that we're going to be in different camps, but she all are different cabins. And she's always saying that she's shy. Oh, she's coming up. Come say hi. Uh, is it just you guys? Because I don't have them. No. I'm in my jeans. It's okay. Oh, she's in her jammies. Is, yeah. she, in Halloween, is she in Halloween pajamas? Hey, uh, <laughs> throw in my hair. That's funny. Hey, everybody. We were talking about you going to creator camp. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, I was I'm excited about it. That sounds like fun. Hey, Kathy, sure. before I forget, a couple of people, Mona and Liz, are asking, what, what is the brand of the spice grinder that you were using earlier? Okay, so it's actually the Ninja Smart Torque. So I bought a Ninja because that's a less expensive blender than the Vitamix or the Blendtec. And most of my recipes, I like to test that they work in both. And then you, you can get this little spice grinder. It's a spice grinder attachment for it. So I think there may be more than one and it has a lid that goes over it. And the reason I like it, so if you have a Vitamix, don't buy this just to have this unless you're going to do a lot of spice grinding i also grind my chilies i make jalapeno powder i grind my chia seeds my flax seeds for baking um it's well worth it for that it is going to have a better motor than a 30 dollars spice grinder so i feel like i can be naughtier. I can push it to its limits. Great. Well, Kathy, this was sure a lot of fun. I wish you a very happy Halloween. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's it's a whole month, a whole month of Halloween. So I know our, our neighbors had their stuff up even in August. It was crazy. Oh, I need to meet them. They're my people. Oh they? my God. They have a huge, I mean, it's like, it's like, it's amazing what they, they've done. They have like that 12 foot skeleton. That oh, you two can... of them and they light up and there's purple and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh, that would be amazing. So we, we, Cheryl and I were saying too, Sacramento was so awesome and there were so many great restaurants and things as far as like being compliant. We ate at vegan, vegan plate, vegan plate. What was the one that, is that the one you took us to or vegan pho? No, we went to vegan plate, but faux vegan vegan is great too. Um, and we went back there the next day because it was so delicious. And there was a whole menu right there that you picked with no oil. And they had Filipino food and Thai food and Americanized Chinese food, like anything that you're really thinking that you wanted. And it was delicious. Mm-hmm. And One of my so, favorites. Yeah. So we hopefully we'll come back and we can see you guys and hang out some more. It's so great. How was the ghost tour? We ended up not going, but we oh. did go. I know. We decided um, it's because we went to that restaurant again <laughs> that we decided to cancel. But we did go to Old Town for just a little bit. And there is like a three floor costume store there. So that was almost better for us than going to the ghost tour. But next time we'll go to the ghost tour and maybe you guys can come with us. Nice. Well, what next time I won't be going to True North the next day and I'm just trying to find a venue. So uh, I, I hope that the church could rent it to us again. But if not, we'll have to find a place. Well, North would Carolina much- would love to have that. So oh, wow. that'd be so cool. Well, <laughs> next month is November. So you're, yeah, it's neat. You're coming on at the, early in the month. So it'll be coming on before Thanksgiving, before Christmas. So I'm sure there's lots of things you can make. Yeah. And if you guys or if, if your listeners have any things that they're wanting to kind of veganize or whole food plant, no oil eyes, let me know and I'll see what I can do. That sounds great. Thanks so much, Kathy. Oh, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to come it's on and so it's even more fun. a pleasure to see you. I can't wait to hear all about this conference. It's I wish I could go. It just sounds like fun camp, uh, cabins, competitions. <laughs> that'll be great well thanks Kathy and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live please come back at 11 a.m. tomorrow for Jeremy Lalonde he's going to tell you how he lost half his body weight eating as much as he 